in leadership. So if you have not served Kev Bazala, I encourage you to serve Kev. Hallelujah. Serve Kev. In the case to the council of the Kev, um, we can show up in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Uh, I know I don't think it would be standing to say all these things, but I know that I still check the same thing. I know I don't know that I'm not. I'm not very excited. I am not very excited. I did not come alone. I came with my brother. And uh, I see my good friend, Mr. Chapel Quinton Mahe. If you know him, he has a, a, a prophetic kind of a prophetic school in Christian. Yeah. Hey, hey. No, most people I saw they recently joined the, the shop in the way and just in the prophetic game. Mm-hmm. I told my Mr. Mabe, my senior. <laughs> Mr. Mabe is my senior. So when I came to you today, I found him here. He's a patron, by the way. Oh, a yeah. faithful patron who comes to care very often. Amen. And can you say, I keep this down for us around. Uh, Mr. Pomefale, hallelujah. Mr. Pomefale is a recording artist. Yeah. 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 The recording artist here is a song. You know that she has released to the amen. And I saw he said he recently did the cover of Cover and Keeping God. Yeah. And you should follow him as well. The song in this song as well. If I was like, she has some who we're going to keep it. Keep it to all those who know me and those who don't. And then put in the, 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 to all the confessions that are here that I might not see. Amen. Thank you, sure. Amen. I want to share on the word of God, Bazala, today to just conclude. Yeah. As I'm today, I'm going to stick to my notes and I'm going to stick to the time allocated. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, God is Son. I'm going to stick to the time. Amen. So I want to speak to the time given and I want to just minister the heart of God as he has made the message in my heart. Amen. Uh, as I remember last time, I remember when I was here and ministered, my message that they recorded did not have audio. As well. uh, so please don't let me again. And I'm here to tell the heart of God. Yes, we bless the name of the Lord. Uh, yeah, so you can play a bit louder. Just a bit louder to my mind. Hallelujah. Uh, I want to speak on the subject, the essence of our being. And the subject in itself we try and address, so I that you address the subject of um, the perfect man, mm-hmm. Jesus Christ. Because my, I have recently come to understand that my purpose, my soul purpose, honestly, in this life is to make you Oh, firstly, to make Christ known, firstly, and to also make to those who know Christ their true nature in the Lord. Hence the title of my message, Amen, which is the essence of our being. The essence of our being, basically, I'm trying to say to you, you are in, you are a spirit being in a bodily form. So you are not the body that's sitting here. That's the essence of your being. The essence of your being says you are a spirit man. John chapter 3, verse 5. It says those born of the flesh are of the flesh, but all those born of the spirit are spirit. So the essence of your being is not an earthly man. This is a temporary body that's kept in the eternal you. But the eternal you, which could possibly live eternally with the Lord or in eternal damnation. Okay, that's all right. Let me just continue with my message. Can okay. you open the book of Hebrews, chapter number one? Hallelujah. Hebrews, uh, chapter number one. We're going to read from verse one to verse eight. Amen, I that's all right. Yeah, and can I ask that we read together? Amen. Uh, one, two, three, let's see. God, God who at some times and in diverse manner spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets. Had in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had appointed heir of all things, by 
by whom also he made the worlds. Who being the brightness of his glory and his express image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Being made so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. Okay, pause there. It says, being made so much better than the angels, as he had by inheritance, by inheritance, obtained a more excellent name than they. Now let's go and see what's that name. Verse 5. Let's read together. One, two, three. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Go, my son. Okay, pause. In the kingdom of God, the true measure of sonship is conformity to the image of the son. If you are not conformed to the image of the son, then we can't then say you have grown to the place. You see, one thing that which I've seen, if you continue, if I'm going to continue reading the scripture, and you will get to see that the sonship position speaks of the essence. And what we are introduced to in the scripture is that son was a name. That's what scripture says. And therefore, we have no measure or standard that we can measure our growth and maturity in the Lord except the Son. So if we are seeking for perfection, the only measure and standard we have is Jesus Christ. But as we continue reading verse 6, no, we didn't finish this. Let's continue from Thou art my Son. One, two, three. Thou art my Son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Verse 6. And again, when he bringeth him the first begotten into the well, he said, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he said, Who maketh his angels spirits? And his ministers have flame of fire. Yes, yes. Thank you. But unto the Son he says, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever a center of righteousness in the center of thy kingdom. Ah. But then in verse 1, what we have learned is it says, God in Sunday times and in diverse manner spoke to us by the prophets. And says, but have in this last day he spoken to us by his son. And this is my point. That if the law was enough in perfecting the saints, then we would have no need for the son of God. That Jesus Christ coming. Jesus Christ coming on earth. If, if the, the law had done its work perfectly so, that the saints had no issue in them anymore, then we would have no right, or we would have no need of Jesus coming to die for men. Amen. So Jesus coming to die for men, I want to read my notes. I don't my notes are powerful. <laughs> I want to read them. So his coming was proof of a missing element in the law. So there was something in the law that which they could not fulfill. That is why Jesus, when he came, he says, I did not come to abolish the law, but I come to fulfill the law. So when he says, I come to fulfill the law, he says, I come to do all that which the law for, for shadow. Then the law he refers to the Torah, the Pentateuch. You see, so the Torah is the first five books of the Bible because of life. Your Genesis, your Exodus, your Leviticus, your Deuteronomy, and your your numbers was a lot. You see, so basically those are your the law. I'm speaking about the, the Pentateuch or the Torah. We're speaking about the books of Moses, which are those ones. So when he comes and says, I've come to fulfill it, he says, I've come to do that which it foreshadows. So it means the law in itself was a stepping stone to the perfecting that has yet to come. Which 
Jesus in the Son Himself. So why is it that there was a missing element in the Lord? I'm saying this. The law of Moses inspired fear more than it did faith. And why am I saying this? Eh? The fear that which he inspired was not necessarily mostly of its reverence to God, but fear of being punished. Yeah. That if they did something wrong, then they would they have a consequence. Basically, if I if I if I commit adultery, I'm I'm subject to be stoned. If I do uh, steal my neighbor's things, I have to be a pig and bear one soul. You know, so basically there were the punishments that came with the law. So people mostly feared the consequence of the law than the God who gave the law. So from there, therefore, Christ comes and in his coming perfected the law. Or oh, yeah, before I say that, one of the ways that you see that people fear this is that you see that once Moses went to meet with God in, 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 on the mountain, that the people said in themselves, they thought Moses was dead, they started building a house. They started building a God because they feared the man Moses more that in his absence they thought God is not present. So therefore from there you see that there is an issue where people fear God from a point of punishment but not from a point of reverence. So Christ comes to instill the reverence in the people that in your service of God is not in fear of being punished but in the love and the honor for his goodness. So, why is it that even the people of old, ah, Jesus, the people of old, even they themselves were not perfectors of the Lord? I'm rushing myself, eh? but I will go. Why is that? It was the case. So, if you if you remember also what I said that once Moses ascended into the mountain, the people started building a false one. The people started building a false wall. So once they built it, the Lord God says to Moses, Hey, my God, your people are sinning down there. Yeah. And once he says that, the Bible says Moses, carrying the law of God, written by the hand of the Lord, he rushes down to see what these people were doing, and on his way, he breaks it. And after he breaks it, the Bible says, once he got there, filled with anger. Was made by God in the garden. 
So you know that John could not be greater than the first Adam because if he was subsequently, it would mean he possibly be greater than the one that is going to come. So he could not be greater than the first Adam, but he could be greater than any man born of a woman. So this refers to even Moses that you just spoke of. But when I said last time, Moses delivered millions of people from Egypt. Moses performed about 10 plagues in the land of Egypt that made him the king and his own, oh, the whole land to shake. The whole land was shaking in fear that they released all the people of Israel because of the miracles that which he was performing at the time. So because of that, then uh, God comes now to say, oh, let me say, Jesus here, just after John sent his disciples and says, go and ask him if he's truly the one or should we wait for another? One, many people have had the same on the message that we preach is that John was doubtful, right? They say John was doubtful in this case. was wondering because he had just been arrested also. So he's wondering in himself, is he truly the one? Or should we wait for another? Jesus sent the disciples and said, Go and tell him. Right? Go and tell him of the things that you see happening. He says, The blind see, the lame are working, and all these things. And then Jesus comes back and looks at the people and says, Out of all men, born of a woman, none is greater than John. But I've read, I've read, I've read, I've read Hebrews 11. Hebrews 11 says, The prophets of old, all of them, lived in faith. He says, They, they, they believe. And they hope to see the coming son, the promised son of God. And he says they died having not received the promise, but they kept the faith. But in this chapter here, John says, Go and ask him if he's truly the one. John was the one sent to reveal the Messiah, he was the one sent to reveal Christ. And as the one sent to reveal Christ, he has to be the one with far more great and better things than all the Chapter 11 of Hebrews, and Jesus says, actually, gives that exactly the case. He says, there's none of them. All the people you read about in the, in the, in the famous wall of faith, in Hebrews chapter 11, he says, none of them are greater than John. After all the miracles, but when I've read about the leash, I've read that the Bible says when he was laying in the tomb, that they laid the body on him, and he says, as soon as they laid the body on him, the body is erected and came to life. But the Bible says, none, even Elisha, is not greater than John. Sebastian, was it me? Sebastian, have you heard of an apostle, Elijah? Elijah, who actually John, the Bible says, he comes in the spirit and in the power of Elijah. But even in that case, the Bible says, even he is not greater than John. The Bible says, Elijah stood as one man against 850 false prophets, 450 prophets of Baal and 400 uh, prophets, I think, of Asherah, if I'm not mistaken. You know, in total, 850 prophets, all of them, he stands as one man. And he says, call on your God, and I will call on mine. 850 prophets, one man. So you get to see that faith does not operate in numbers. It operates in the hearts that one decides to believe in the Lord. That even as a one man, you can check the whole nation. That is why Elijah alone was able to stand as a measure at those days. And to see 850 prophets. was so already two days. I'm going to go to the house. Two, two, two. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. I'm going to go to the house. And then he says, after he proved that actually their God does not exist, the Bible says he slaughtered all of them. But then he tell me, tell me, yeah, tell me, I've, I've seen movies, I love movies. Tell me, how do you say that some men? And slaughter 850 prophets. False prophets. Then the Bible comes and says, even he is not greater than John. As I can 
mention as many characters as I could from the Old Testament. All of them, none, none. Out of all men, as long as a man was born of a woman, the Bible says none of them is greater than John. So why? Why was John considered greater? When all he did was just to announce Jesus as the Lamb of God. See, that's exactly the the fact that he introduced Jesus as the Lamb of God. As only think of it. What which never can it it may not be the Bible to come? Which never can be John before? Which one? No, if, if you know it, I'll, I'll promise, I'll, I'll, I'll point you. Don't no, remember, no, it's not embarrassing, I'm just asking. Yeah. Which is one? Yeah. One character that John performed. In fact, my Bible says, as soon as Jesus appeared, and he says, Behold, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of men, the sin of the world. And then after he says that, he says, The next day when Jesus passes, and he comes and says that, and Behold, the Lamb of God. And the Bible says, The disciples of John left John to follow Jesus. It means, who was the man? It means the ministry of John was so successful, so much that even his disciples, after he has taught them so much about the coming Messiah, they are able to meet him and follow Jesus. So the success, ooh, the success of every minister is that people are able to follow Jesus after a minister, not you. Not you. John was able to minister so much, even in those days, the Bible says, they came and they asked him, are you a writer? He says, no. He says, are you Jeremiah? He says, no. Are you one of the prophets? He says, no. They say, then who are you? Are you the coming of the He says, no. He says, then who are you? He says, I am the voice. Crying in the wilderness. So this is the man that was touching them in his body that I only came to introduce the Messiah. I don't care about his position. I came to introduce the perfect man. So you only think, Bazalani, which made John greater. This was my conclusion was his proximity to the Lord. The fact that in all those who are speaking of the promise that he is coming, he's the only one who said, here it is. It's here. It's here. Oh. Ah, I was alive. Imagine the honor of being the one chosen from there that you come for one purpose and one purpose only to make known the Messiah. That is why after that, he says, when the disciples and the people come and they say, we saw Jesus preaching there and baptizing with his disciples. And then he says, John, to the disciples and the that they say this, he says, I completed my assignment. It is my time to decrease that he may increase. So we know then that even when we have come, and the minister and do all these things, it's of necessity that it's not us, that it's sin, but the Lord. Because we are but just vessels and messengers. Mm. So proximity to the perfect man made him a far better man because perfection Jesus, is not measured by greater work or impact, but by proximity to the Lord and how conformed are you to the Son. Hmm. But along the Bible that I read, Jesus says, In those days they will say to me, Lord, I raised the dead. I'm very good at it. In fact, I can prove it to you now. And that was that extra information. <laughs> but he says, I visited the dead. He says, Lord, we have healed the sick. He says, We've done it. But the Bible says, Jesus will then say, I did not know you. Because success in the faith, greatness in the faith, growth in the faith, the standard of perfection which we chase after is not works, is conformity. Ooh, we are not chasing after works. Those things come as an addition. 
Then we find these those who believe. This works shall follow them. So we are not running after performing miracles. We are running after believing in Him because the other things are a promise to follow. So for the mere fact that I'm following the Lord, I'm running after the Lord, I'm pursuing the Lord, performing, raising the day as an extra thing. And sitting in the seat is an extra thing because I believe in the Lord. Although my child is almost up, and I'm not even watching to the cheese for the man. So I'm just kidding. Hey, Jacob, how you doing today? So John was closer to perfection than any man in the Old Testament. Uh-huh. But here's the powerful thing of the that actually in John, there's one better than him. Let's read together as well. Let's start from the beginning. One, two, three, let's see. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of the woman, there has not risen a greater than John the Baptist. Not the same thing in the other version. In the other one. There's, there's a witch that's powerful. Simple English. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. Yes. See, so I assure you, let's go. Among those born of women, no one greater than John the Baptist has appeared. But, so you see where the power is. Just there. Let's go. But the least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. Now this talks of you and I. Why then are we greater? Why then are we better? It's because we have attained the salvation which they were hoping for. So we conform to the Son because He is the perfect representation of the perfection of the Lord of God. So, let me just read through some of my points so that you get them and then continue. Ah. Perfection is not possible outside of salvation, which is ultimately outside of Christ. So, every man that's outside of salvation was not even close. It's not even close to being perfect, but every man within the salvation is closer. That is why Paul says, I'm not there yet, but I'm missing one. Towards the man of the high calling of God. It's not, he hasn't attained it, but he's pressing on. He's pressing on. Lord, I'm, I'm not perfect yet, but I'm pressing on. I'm chasing it. Lord, I, 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 I failed at this point, but Lord, I'm pressing on. I'm chasing after the mark of the high calling of God. Ah, Kari Tobali and Tobali. So, Christ be God, but when I was given, in six minutes, I'm going to finish this. Christ being given, being God, was given was a name above the God of the angels, as we read in Hebrews chapter number one, which is Son. His, what a, his inheritance in this part of the verse, at least, was speaking of sonship. And the Bible continues to then say that. <laughs> Okay, next one. Let me continue. That's it. But then it's getting child my time. Next time, I'm not going to get you. Amen. See, such a is what makes us greater than the angelic beings by virtue of essence. <laughs> okay. Such is what makes us greater than angelic beings by virtue of essence. Because the Bible says we are being conformed to the image of the Son which is Jesus Christ. And Jesus, the Bible says, he has been raised. He has been raised. And the Bible says, he's seated far above dominions and authorities. The Bible says, in the book of Revelation, it says, there was an angel of dominion, if I'm not mistaken, it says, an angel of dominion, which bound one, one of them, bound the devil for a thousand years. One angel 
bound the enemy, the same the devil, Satan, for a thousand years. So nothing happened. I'm going to say something, uh, which I, 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 I hope does not start a problem. The enemy, Satan, is not in our league. He's a fallen angel. And the Bible says angels are ministering spirits. And the Bible says Jesus is seated far above them. And it comes back to say that we are seated with Christ in heavenly places, far above principality, authority, and dominion. You are seated far above them by essence. By virtue of being a son of God, there's nothing else greater in the creation of God than you. There's nothing else greater than you. Expect Jesus himself and the truth the tribune of God. Hmm. My time is up. Time is almost up. Time is almost up. Time is almost up. Have we reached perfection? No. No, we have not reached perfection. We are running towards, towards the mark of the high calling. Because I believe, I believe that we have been perfected. And open for me quickly, second Corinthians chapter number 3, verse 18. This is my last scripture, Bazala, and I just want to pray a bit and then we conclude. The measure of our salvation and sonship is not our own works or deeds, but how much do we conform to the standard of the way, which is Jesus. And I read the scripture, I, but I know this one is a whole big subject. So it's not, it's not us, it's not our works. We, we do not attain perfection by the works and the things we do. We attain it by the fact that we have been conformed to the image of the sun. Ah. We all with unveiled faces are reflecting the glory of the Lord, are being transformed, are being transformed. But more is slow, as you will know. This is a present continuous tense. Yeah, I know English. I got a certificate in primary <laughs> when in high school. Present continuous tense. This, we are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory. This is from the Lord who is the Spirit. The essence of our being is Spirit. You are a Spirit man in every body. So you be doing yourself an injustice if you think that your limitation is in regards to the flesh. Ah, but I mean, we don't we don't Nothing is new to the spirit man. Okay. This is my completely purpose of life. And, well, chapters, and I hope I, don't, I did your message. I hope so. But, we don't, oh, there's nothing new to the spirit man. The reason why I'm saying this is because if we are spirit beings, we never speak things, we speak of things which is in our actual real level, in our dimension, where we actually live into the flesh. We speak into being things that are not in the flesh, into the flesh. Hence, Jesus was able to pray and give thanks to the Lord when he had five loaves and two fishes, and he said, Lord, I thank you for your provision of the Lord, we bless the Lord. When he blessed the food and was able to get one at the time, and the Bible says he gave the food so much that there was an extra that remained. Because as a spirit man, we speak from a place of abundance, not a place of lack. The spirit man is not poor, maybe the flesh is not the spirit man. The spirit man is not in need because we speak where Jesus says, for store up yourself treasure in the heavenly realms. So we understand when scripture says silver and gold belongs to me. That is the Lord speaking and therefore we understand that we speak from a place of abundance the things that already are in the spirit into the flesh. So what's not real to you here does not mean it does not exist. 
What you set your mind on, it's very much attainable. What you set your mind on, basically what you believe the Lord for, and you are saying, Lord, thank you that you have healed me. That is all about, okay, let me put it this way. The Bible says, let the weak say, and let the poor say, why is it saying, let the poor say, I am rich? It's because the poor is the flesh. But the part that says, I am rich, is the spirit man. Because he comes to a place where he understands his nature. The fact that I am not in lack. So the person that seeks after perfection is your spirit, not your flesh. Because your flesh will never attain the perfect man. Your flesh will never win the war of perfection. But your spirit will. That is why we continue fasting and prayers when we pray, Lord. And we, we, you know, that's why there's an argument as I go through, but we can stand in one minute. You know, that's why I mean. Ah, oh, Jesus. I've heard that there was one argument where the man of God was like, if you have not prayed for 10 hours, yeah. you are a joke. Hey, hey. If you are, he said, if you are 21, so see what you If you are if you are 21 and you have not paid for 10 hours, he says you are a joke. And people were offended by the fact that he says you are a joke, not necessarily by the 10 hours. But may not my issue, and this actually my father was my father in the Lord also raised this. He said, my issue is why would you complain? Like, why do you complain? May not this is what I would say, but the Bible says. Jesus prayed until he sweat blood. He comes back also to the disciples. I'm not, I'm not commenting on that part of John's Nazareth. Right? I'm just telling you this part. He says, Jesus prayed, and after he prayed, he comes back to the disciples, trying to speak, and he says, Could you not stay with me at least? At least an hour. So, Nazareth, you know, this is my conclusion. If you can stay six hours to study for that exam, you can surely stay six hours for prayer. That, that's my conclusion. If you can stay six hours, but I know that people after the service they are going to a degree to study until in the morning. There are people who are constantly like this right now. And therefore, if that is the case, you are able to stay six. Oh, but you can do it. And believe in me. I believe in you. Remember, you are a spirit man. The Bible says it's a spirit that when he says for the spirit helped the infirmities, that if we do not know what to pray for, he says he groans with academies that are too deep for it. So the spirit man is always in intercession. My father, the Lord says Jesus, his ministry on earth was three and a half years, but his ministry as an intercessor was about two thousand years. Huh. So for the past 2,000 years since the ascension of the Lord, he's been in intercession, praying for the saints. He said, nobody can go to the Father except to me. He said, oh, if you are afraid to represent me before men, I will not represent you before the Father. So for the past 2,000 years, he's been praying. He's been praying. Can you stand on our feet? So the standard of every man and the standard of perfection is not in any place except in the Lord. If we are seeking for perfection, your measure is not me. Your measure is not your parents. Your measure is not your man of God. Your measure is Jesus. They stood. Jesus said, Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. So they stand as a template to show you the way of following the Father. Maybe I'm just provoking you today and ask yourself, why do I believe? There are too many people who are religious. The Bible says, you believe that God exists, you do good. Even the demons believe and they are afraid. So faith, you have, the fact that you believe in God is no, it's actually not enough. The fact that I believe in God, hallelujah, amen. 
If you are in our presence, even the demons, they and they are afraid. Imagine demons. I said on my screen the other day, the devil's plan is to deceive you into believing what he already believes. Yeah. He knows that God exists, but he's trying to tell you that he does not. Because they are already condemned, but you are waiting for that. So as long as you are deceived in the fact that he does it, he's fine. So ask yourself this question, Lord, why do I believe? I want you to pray right now, even as I live. I want you to pray. So Lord, set my heart ablaze. Set my heart on fire for you. May it burn. May it burn for you. Let us pray. Let us pray. I took a bail as I told my ekiba like to me. Ah, Lord, set our hearts on fire for you.